YouTube is probably one of the most interesting places because you have so many people that watch other individuals and think that they understand everything. They think that they know more than the actual individual making the content themselves, what goes into their mindset, why they do the things that they do. And the video game world on YouTube is probably the one subsect of YouTube that is constantly under a microscope. Everyone thinks that they know everything about the individual presenting, and most of the time it's inaccurate to say the least. And when it comes to the Nintendo Switch and the YouTube side of things, there's a lot of people who think they completely understand the thought process. They think they completely understand what goes on to things behind the scenes, and they think that they know it all. And I'm here to say, you know, you might be right about some things, you might be right about some individuals, but for the most part, there's a lot of misconceptions. So in today's video, I thought it would be fun to clear up some misconceptions about Nintendo Switch YouTubers, as they are called. Now, first and foremost, I don't really consider myself a Nintendo Switch YouTuber. I know that places like Reddit and places that don't like me and stuff like that consider me to be a Nintendo Switch YouTuber, but I don't really consider myself that. Am I a video game channel that does focus a lot on Nintendo stuff? Yeah, for sure. Like 70, 80% of my stuff is probably based on Nintendo, but it's not all I do. And we'll get into the reasons and sort of the logic and stuff behind that in just a few moments. But when it comes to the whole Nintendo side of things, there of course are the Nintendo ambassadors, those who work directly with Nintendo themselves. Now, I used to work directly with Nintendo. I no longer do. It's been quite a while since I have. People have come and gone from the Nintendo ambassador program, but once again, there's, there's so many misconceptions about that whole program, and I wanted to clear those up before I get into the more personal stuff as far as my mentality and why I do things the way I do things. So, first and foremost, one of the things I see all the time pop up is, oh, Nintendo ambassadors get paid by Nintendo. They get paid by Nintendo. That's why they're talking, you know, positively about this game because they're getting paid by Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't pay anyone. Nintendo doesn't pay anyone. They pay their employees, but you're just an independent contractor who happens to work with Nintendo and are a part of a program. There's actually no monetary value given to this program. Now, you may get review copies with Nintendo. You might get paid an exposure and Nintendo puts you in some of their advertising or something like that, which you could consider, well, you know, is that a form of payment? Yeah, maybe, I mean, really a, a $60 game, is that really worth risking your, your reputation on the internet for? I don't know, you know, you could make that case either way. I think for me personally, hell no, it's not. But there's this misconception that Nintendo literally gives cash money along with the game to some of these ambassadors and and they don't the whole ambassador program is just to work with nintendo and essentially get review copies of stuff with nintendo nintendo treats youtubers and websites in a completely different manner websites are held up on a higher pedestal i'm guessing it's because of the japanese culture but a website is someone that nintendo holds in high degree and a youtuber you're like the bottom of the barrel with nintendo they really don't care about you they just do the whole youtube thing because it got a bit popular you got to remember this was the company that wouldn't let you show footage of games as recently as like five or six years ago you could not show gameplay footage from your game whether you bought it or not without nintendo copyright striking it and saying hey this is our property they're very behind on the times with stuff like this so i i think to think that these people are getting paid is silly because that that's simply not true now you can get into the whole thing of you know are people afraid of talking bad about nintendo to get dropped from the program this that and the other I mean, maybe, but really, at the end of the day, the program is pretty worthless. You know, the program itself is, is pretty worthless unless, you know, that $60 game is something that is, is a big deal to you. You know, that's something that you need because half the time, Nintendo doesn't even send it to you early. You have to actually get the game when it comes out in retailers, but a website will get the game early. And then there's the whole thing of, well, Nintendo only works with, with bigger channels for the ambassador program, and that's the biggest load of bullshit that I've ever heard because that's that's not how that works. And I'm not trying to defend Nintendo here uh, whatsoever. I'm just simply trying to clarify misconceptions. Um, I'm subscribed to a lot of channels. Do I watch all their stuff? Not really because I like to watch stuff with like cars and funny dogs and stuff like that when I watch YouTube. But with Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope, there was a preview event where people could play the game. And some of these ambassadors have like a thousand subscribers. So it's not, it's all because you're a, you're a big 
YouTube channel doesn't mean that Nintendo is actually interested in you. They kind of just like a diverse cast of people. They don't care about your numbers. They're more interested in, I'm not even really sure what they're interested in because I watch some of these channels and I'm like, these channels suck, but they're the ones working with Nintendo. So, you know, it's, it's a weird thing. Is Nintendo a perfect company when it comes to the YouTube side of things? No, not, not by far, but those are two of the biggest misconceptions that that i see when it comes to the ambassador program so i figured i would clarify this i don't even know if ambassadors can talk about stuff like that you know they have to do the hashtag free game whenever nintendo sends them a game on release date it's like bro just buy the damn game and then you don't have to worry about doing the stupid hashtag or nintendo getting mad at you about it or something like that but i think the bigger thing i wanted to focus in on in this video is just me personally me me as a youtuber me is how i operate things because like i said at the start of this video i do not consider myself a nintendo switch youtuber you know i don't have the word nintendo or, or switch in the title of my channel name and that's because this channel was never supposed to be about really nintendo stuff i started this channel out originally to do more sort of retro stuff because at that time retro gaming was was becoming you know popular there was a lot more systems coming out there was new games coming out there was news happening all the time and i wanted to sort of capitalize on that when you look at my journey as a youtuber people people like to say things like oh you do nintendo switch stuff because it's easy views it's easy which is the most bizarre logic I've ever heard in my life because you can look at so many Nintendo Switch channels that don't get dick for views. Okay, they don't get dick for views, but but they're making Nintendo videos. So so why aren't they blowing up? Why aren't they the big? You know why aren't they getting hundreds of thousands of subscribers and stuff like that? Because that's a stupid mantra. It has nothing to do with something like that. When you look at my journey, I started doing content creation online back in 2012 i was working for a website called gamingtruth.com it was six individuals five individuals something like that and um each one of us kind of had our own little thing i was the new guy on the scene we had a guy who did a lot of pc stuff a guy who did xbox 360 stuff ps3 stuff stuff like that the wii u and the nintendo 3ds were kind of the new systems for nintendo and nobody on that site had both of those systems except for me I also had an Xbox 360. I also had a PlayStation 3, but they already had those sort of covered on the website. So sort of by default, they were like, okay, well, we're gonna use you as the Wii U and the 3DS guy because you have both of these systems. So when we get review copies of stuff, you're going to check it out. Okay, makes perfect sense. Then you have to transition to when I left that website because everyone kind of went and sort of did their own thing. Once again, I worked with Nintendo enthusiasts because I was like, well, I've been covering Nintendo stuff for, you know, well over a year now. I kind of understand how it works. Let me try my hand at this. I ended up becoming editor in chief of that website as well. So I was the one that was dealing with places like Golan Harris, which is the company that at least at that time was working with Nintendo to sort of divvy out, okay, who gets this game? Who gets this game? Who gets this game? So I had a direct line of connection with them. What does that have to do with RGT 85 though? Well, when I started doing this channel, there were certain things that I was able to do involving the Nintendo Switch because I still had those contacts. I was still getting review copies of games and stuff like that. And you would have something written on the website, but then it was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool to make a video about this. Why don't I do a preview video on my channel and then we could do the review on the main channel. So we started going with that. When you look at my history of looking at the Nintendo Switch as a system, I was not too thrilled with it when it was first announced. I didn't realize it would become this huge cultural phenomenon that people would have to, you know, have to have and have to learn about, have to learn about the new games and be so interested in, especially considering that I was the guy making Wii U videos on Nintendo Enthusiast's YouTube channel. The Wii U, the system that absolutely nobody cared about. So why would I, why would I do that? Why would I waste my time doing that? Well, I'm one person. I can only focus on certain things and that's something that I, i've learned over the years you know it's something that you have to you have to respect your time and when youtube starts to become good for you and you start making good money and you're able to potentially look at this like a business you have to realize that your time is money so it's better to talk about things that people are interested in people are coming to your channel for more so than talking about things that aren't interesting to people i feel like people are interested in video games there's probably a large subsect of them that are primarily interested in nintendo but like i said that was never the intent of this channel it this channel was supposed to be about retro stuff and i quickly realized that 
there's only so much you could do in the world of retro and and the the audience for retro games and the audience for modern games is a completely different audience for whatever reason and i'm not trying to you know diminish people or anything like that but for whatever reason there's a lot of people in the retro gaming community who watch retro gaming on youtube that are very hateful people they're, they're very hateful people they don't like to see people become successful talking about video games they don't like to see you know uh, them putting an advertisement from a sponsor in a video that, that's selling out it should just be about the old video games and stuff like that and you really don't see that nearly as much and the modern stuff and it's just a very bizarre situation i'm a member of a sega saturn group that i've been a member of for years on facebook i recently did a sega saturn video for whatever reason that video ended up getting posted in there and there was probably one nice comment on there these people didn't know i was in that group there was probably one nice comment in there all the other comments were i want to punch this guy in the face this guy doesn't know what he's talking about he must have just typed sega saturn into google and saw that it was popular and made a video on it i'm like bro you don't even know me i have tons of sega saturn videos on this channel but you just see what you want to see you 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 anticipate what you want to anticipate and then you make a, a rash decision to 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 try to tear someone down because you see that you know they made a video on something that you like and maybe you didn't agree with the video like i don't even understand it i don't even understand it and when i made a tweet talking about the, the retro gaming community on twitter i had so many content creators who used to just focus on retro stuff people that i know people that you know that don't really focus on, on retro anymore and they reached out to me and said hey you know what thank you for saying that because that's one of the reasons why we sort of focus more on modern gaming i know i'm getting a little bit off course here but it does all sort of tie back in to the nintendo switch stuff because at the end of the day people pigeonhole me as a nintendo switch channel and i don't think i am you know when a game comes out if a game comes out on ps5 or xbox or there's an announcement for xbox that's big or ps5 that's big or there's an event or something like that i will cover it there are nintendo channels out there who only cover nintendo stuff and i consider those to be the switch youtubers i don't think it's a bad moniker to have or anything like that i just don't consider myself to be that i consider myself someone who looks at the landscape of video games thinks okay well what's going to be the best use of my time you know let's say there's two games that come out which are people going to be more interested in hearing my thoughts about because i'm a one-man team it's just me here i make my thumbnails i edit my videos i i film my videos you know this is all just me i'm, I'm only one person one person can't play every video game in the world so do i focus on nintendo switch stuff yeah but it's not because it's easy views it's because i've been doing this since 2012 and a lot of people have been doing this for a very long time were there people who sort of hopped onto the nintendo switch bandwagon when the switch came out and people started showing interest on in it of course they are but where are they now was it sustainable no you have to have something behind the content there has to be an individual connection behind the content or you like the style of the person or something you know real recognizes real i feel and there's a lot of people that are kind of fake on youtube and you know some of them are successful but whenever somebody says you know oh you do nintendo switch stuff because it's popular it's like no if i wanted to go that route i would be a minecraft fortnite uh call of duty streamer and that's all i would do and that's all i would make videos on because that is where the big money is that is where you can get a much younger audience to watch all of your stuff and buy into your scams or whatever you're doing when you look at trending on youtube's gaming homepage, it's always always full of people like this making call of duty fortnite and minecraft videos but i get it you know that's what works for them that's what's buying them mansions and stuff like that so i'm not gonna hate on it but the nintendo switch youtuber moniker i just feel like it, it, it's a weird it's a weird moniker to give people you know are there nintendo switch channels yes if you have nintendo in the name of your channel more than likely you're a nintendo switch channel if you're a switch if you have the word switch in your channel more than likely you are a nintendo switch channel and when you look at all of their videos it's always going to be stuff about the switch maybe they'll deviate I don't know, once in a great while but for the most part 99.9% .9 of the content is focused on Nintendo I don't really do that like even in my videos that have a lot of Nintendo stuff I'll often talk about other systems and other platforms and other stuff I'm playing I'm actually playing a lot of games that are not available on Nintendo right now it's just that 
when I make a video, I have to think, well, what's going to be the most interesting thing for me? And what's going to be the most interesting thing for my audience? And what do I know that I can talk about that I actually know what I'm talking about? I'm not going to talk about, you know, it's something with a, another system that I, I'm not familiar with or a game that I'm not familiar with, the game that I've never played before, because that, that's just stupid. Like, you can't you can't fake that sort of stuff people are gonna look through you and see your plot holes very quickly so this video has already gone on for way too damn long but i wanted to clear some things up i wanted to clear some things up because i know that i'm considered a nintendo switch youtuber and you know if that's what people want to consider me at the end of the day that's that's fine i don't necessarily think i am but if that's what you think and that's why you come to the channel then that's great if you come to the channel for other reasons you know you like the older stuff you like the retro stuff you like the occasional ps5 stuff you like the rant stuff or whatever the case may be like that's great as long as you come to the channel as long as you enjoy the videos like that's all i give a shit about like just watch the videos man that, that's all i ask that is all i ask but yeah, I hope this cleared up some misconceptions. If you have more questions about this, you know, come by a live stream on the secondary channel, um, RGT Live and Extras. Um, I stream like Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday nights after the spawn cast. Feel free to ask whatever, and I will clarify anything because I'm a pretty open person at the end of the day. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to shut the hell up now. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.